If you don't want to waste your time trying to compare all the different e-signature products out there for your organization, I've made this video for you. In the previous video, I've reviewed three e-signature products, DocuSign, SignWell, and Pandadoc, from three different perspectives, feature set, price point, and ease of use. And in this specific video, I want to go one step further. I want to show you how to actually use them. We'll be setting up this form as a template, send it to ourselves, and then we will sign it so we can see exactly what the experience is going to be for the senders as well as for the signers. And if you don't know me, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm a next DocuSign staff and software implementation consultant and now founder of SolidSign Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped thousands of organizations automate document workflows that require signature collection. We do this by setting up templates, connecting those templates to the systems that you use every day using integrations, and then finally training your users. If you're interested in learning how an e-signature implementation and automation can help your organization save a ton of time and headaches, you can schedule a workflow audit call with one of our team members. During the call, we will analyze your document workflows and suggest the best setup based on your organization's unique needs. You can find the link to schedule that consultation using the link just down below. And this is a complimentary call. And I've also included a free e-signature tool assessment so that you can ask yourself the right questions before you make a purchasing decision with any other e-signature product that you might be considering as well. You'll have a set of questions that you can ask the vendors so that you can make an informed decision. All right, let's get started. Here's a document that we're going to set up as a template. This document needs to be sent to new starters so that we can collect their bank information so that we can pay them. This document doesn't technically need to be signed, but we will add a signature at the bottom as well. And then we will use that template to send this document to a candidate. We'll be acting as the candidate or as the new starter, I should say. And then we will sign as the new starter so that you will see exactly what the experience is from sending the document using a template's perspective, as well as from the signer's perspective. Let's start with SignWell. So with SignWell, we're going to go to our template list and then new template. And then we're going to drag our document. Here's our document, continue. And here's where we're going to add the role name of the first signer. And that first and unique signer is the new employee. We could add ourselves if we wanted to countersign this document. We don't need a signing order here because there's only one person signing. So we're going to click on prepare. And here we have our list of fields. So we have the standard fields and auto field. So we're going to use a name field for the first name. And we want to change this to a first name, drag another one. And then we change this to a last name. Great. I'm just going to do a couple of the fields. So here we need a street address that's going to be a text field. And I can also do a fixed width, which is great so that the text is not going to go over. And then we're going to pretend that somebody needs to sign here, even if they don't. So we're going to drag a checkbox for the account type and then add another checkbox, which is part of the same group and drag that checkbox here. And we want to make sure that people select exactly one. And so here we're going to say group name bank details. This is going to be account type. So this is how you customize the label. The label is important because if you want to get access to this information in the API, you want to know without looking at the document, you want to know what options were checked. So they don't have a drop down actually. So your state needs to be a text field, which is a little bit unfortunate, I have to say, because then you don't really get clean data. The reason I think drop downs are important is because you want to get clean data. Imagine you send this to 10 or 100 people. You want the state to be spelled exactly in the same way for all your candidates. Maybe one is going to say New York fully spelled out. The other one is going to say NY. And while it might not be a big issue at first, then if you want to reuse this information in other forms that expect the data to be formatted in a certain way, that's not going to work. Anyways, we're going to delete this. We don't have a drop down, so no worries. So we've tested all the text fields. We could use a date field as well, but we're not going to need that. We don't need anything else. Okay, so we're going to finish our template. And then this is the custom message that our employees will receive. We can customize this here. Here we have a setting button. And so we can redirect uh, people to a specific page, which is really good. In DocuSign, you can only do this on an enterprise plan, which is a little bit silly, I think. So this is very good on SignWell. Now let's do the same thing with DocuSign. So we're going to go to Templates and then Start, Envelope, Create an Envelope Template. And we'll drag our document in here. We'll give a name to our template. So 
bank info and then our role will be the candidate so that's for the uh, first signer we're not going to add a name or email because those are dynamic values it will be the, a different candidate each time here we can customize the email subject email message and then next and from here we're just going to drag and drop our fields so it's the same concept here we use a name field and this we turn it into a first name here i can copy my field so command d and then i'm just going to change this to a last name now for my address i'm going to use a street address and expand the width and i'm also going to say that i want a full a fixed width for my for this field and here i've got my state list so i can drag a drop down menu and in my drop down menu i can specify what are my values so i can say New York, Florida, California, blah, blah, blah. And then for my account type, we have radio buttons. And so radio buttons are the same as sign well, really. It's just that here, the rule that says that you can only select one is already pre-configured. You can still customize the values, which is important if you want to extract these values from API or as a CSV. So that's pretty straightforward with DocuSign. I can do this my eyes closed. We've been doing DocuSign for so many years now. And now we're going to do the same thing with Panadoc. Let's rename our templates. So that's details. That's pretty simple. And here we're going to drag and drop our fields. So I don't know why we have the word client here. We definitely don't have a client here. This is going to be our employee. And I think it's just a default setting because most Panadoc users use this for clients. But that's a little bit confusing, I have to admit. Let's just check the roles in our workflow. So here, template roles, delete role. For clients, we don't need this. So that was actually by default just included in the workflow. So here we want a text field. This is going to be the name that has to be text. So that's not going to be an automated field. Unfortunately, signers are going to have to enter information in there, but we might be able to add some sort of tooltip so that people really understand what they need to do here. Placeholder, your name. Okay, I guess we can do it this way. That's not gonna be a multi-line text. That's going to be a single line text. And then here we can just have the field ID, which is candidate first name. And here, let's just see what we can do for our street address. So that's going to be a text field as well, but that's going to be, no, actually, so here's the trick. These fields here are not to be completed by the signers, but by the senders. So we don't need that. Instead, we're going to use a text field here and we can also make it larger. And let's go to our properties. And here we can say address. We cannot set the width to be fixed. In this example, it's not a big issue because there's plenty of space for the address, but that might be an issue for other fields. Now we do have drop down option, which is great. And let's see how we add our options. New York, Wyoming, Florida, California. Okay. And then that's a required field as well. And this is going to be our candidate state. Okay, let's see. And now let's do our radio buttons. Checking, saving. Okay, and this is going to be account type for our field label. And then let's just add a signature field so we can see what the signing experience looks like. And then a date signed field. Now, do we have to lock this date format autofill with signing date? Okay, perfect. Now, I guess the template is saved. There's no save button. We're going to click on use this template and then we can give a name to that specific transaction, which is something that's nice, not DocuSign doesn't do that. Signwell doesn't do that either. And so here it's going to be Sofian candidate, the candidate's email. We could also add a phone number because Panadoc does support text delivery. And then we're gonna click on continue. Here we get a chance to add some information. So again, one, two, three main street, click on send by email and continue. I can customize the email message if I want to, I'm not gonna do it here. And then I'm just sending it now. Now let's take a look at what the email notification from Panadoc looks like. Here is the email notification. Let's click on open document. And then I'm gonna click on start. And same thing, I cannot finish signing until I'm done. I really like this UI, this is pretty cool. It looks a little bit nicer than SignWell and DocuSign, if I'm honest. And then here we select our state. Let's click on finish. You see the finish button is actually grayed out, so we can't do it. By default, it's a type. We can change the font if I want to. I can draw or I can upload a, a copy of my signature. I'm just going to go with this and accept and sign and then finish. Now let's see how we can track this transaction inside of our sent documents so by going to documents and then my documents 
I can see that the status of these documents has completed. So it's here. I can also filter by status here. So I can see all my completed documents, all my pending documents. If I had not signed, I would then only see my document here, but I don't have any pending documents. And so let's go one step further. I've got my LD trail here. So that's really nice. I can see how long the uh, people spent on this. The view time was 39 seconds. That pr that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at the actual document. So Panadoc does not by default include the PDF document and email. You have to click on open document to see it, which I find more secure. There might be a way to turn this on so that PDF is included if we want to. But for these type of documents, I don't like bank account to be sent by email. Uh, so that's pretty good. So that's it for Panadoc. Now let's send the document using Signwell. So this is our template. We're going to click on use and then use the template. We can either use the template to send a document for signature to someone or sign in person, which means that the signer is going to be using our own computer or we can get a template link and send the link by email to someone. We'll click on use template because this is the most common way of sending documents for signature. Here we've got this template selected. We can select two templates actually, uh, but we're just going to select that first template for now. We can add more documents if we want to. We don't need that. Here, new employee, let's just say Sofian employee, and then I'm going to click on prepare. Here we get a chance of changing the form fields if we want to. So if we want to add another field, we can. But what's also important is that we can add information here. So obviously that would not really apply to this use case, but if you already had information on the signer, then you can pre-populate that information in the form fields before you send it. We're going to click send document. What I really like, it's, it's like a, a wizard type as opposed to DocuSign where you have to know where to click to do the thing. Document has been sent. Now let's sign it. Here is what the email notification looks like. So we've got the branding and we've got the little message. Here is what the email invite to signers look like. So we're just going to click on view document to complete the signing process. If we click on next field, we'll bring brought to the first required field. And so if we try to skip it, then it's just going inside and you, you actually get guided. Okay, so we cannot finish without obviously completing this. We can draw, we can upload, we're just going to leave this signature type, it's fine. Date signed, we can actually change the date, which is super weird. I'm wondering if this is in the template, but Let's just take a look at our template. Why can we change the date sign? There must be a validation here. Oh, locked to signing date. Okay, so you have to check this thing. Uh, forgot, which is why we can change the date, but technically we should not be able to change the date. Now, if we want to track our documents, we just go to the documents tab at the top and then we can sort by status. And there should be one that's in progress, which is this one, it says in progress. Let's take a look at what we can see if we click here. We can actually see what was entered by uh, the recipient, even though they haven't signed, which is nice in case they don't complete the signing action. But now if I click on agree and finish, then the status of this document should change from in progress to completed. And it does say completed here. We should now get an email back from Signwell with our document and we also got a notification saying the document has been viewed so that was sent a little bit earlier and here's the email with the completed document pretty simple we also have the certificate of completion so the audit report that's here which tells us when was the document first viewed created sent and obviously signed and we have the document id which is the unique identifier stamp which should be applied to all pages yes it's applied here and on the following page it's very simple i really like sign well and it's so inexpensive as well. Typic on average of eight times cheaper than DocuSign. Let's do the same thing with DocuSign. So we're going to click on use and then here the candidate's name. So that's going to be Sofian candidate as well. So here we can send this by text or WhatsApp and email. But well, I'm just going to use email. Sign only supports email at this stage. Now you see the thing with DocuSign is that if you don't know where to click, you're going to have to click on send and then you cannot prefill the envelope. This is the thing that I don't really like. You can actually customize in the settings of your template, whether you want the person who is going to be using the template to be forced to go to this screen. So if I click on advanced edit from here, then I can navigate to next and then I'm going to be able to add data in my field. However, you have to know how to do that. And then I'm going to click send. So that's very fast as well. In DocuSign, if we want to track our transactions, we just go back to agreements and sent 
or completed depending on whether the document has been signed or not signed. You can also just type the person's email directly in here and then the document should come up. There you go. We have the document. So that's how you track document. You can also see the full history in here. You can see when documents have been viewed, open, signed, and all of this. Here is what the DocuSign email looks like. So we're going to click on review document. And then I agree to use e-signatures and then continue. And if I try to click finish, then I cannot. I have to provide a state and then an account type. And then I actually forgot to add the signature field here, but you just click on sign. And then you get the same sort of pop-up as you get, got with sign well. And I just click finish. And here, unfortunately, I'm not redirected to a specific URL. I'm just being asked to sign up for a free DocuSign account, which is fine. But with sign well, at least you can uh, redirect to a, to a thank you page where you can add additional information about what the next steps are. With DocuSign, you also get a notification when the signer has viewed the document, which I've also missed. And I should by now. And here is my completed document. We have the document that's here. And then we've got the certificate of completion. Now I'm curious, which of those three did you like the most from a sending perspective, sending experience and signing experience? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you need help implementing e-signature products and automating your document workflows for your organization, you can schedule a workflow audit call with one of our team members using the link just down below. We'll analyze your unique setup and process so that we can recommend the best setup in terms of software, as well as automation and integrations so that you can save time and headaches. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing.